In this video, I'll be demonstrating the service chaining capabilities of WebTeller. Attached is the topology that we'll be working on. As you can see, we have three branches and a hub. We also have a firewall connected to the hub. By default, all traffic from branch 1 to branch 2 goes through both the transport link, that is MPLS and internet, directly. We will now build a policy to force the traffic from branch 1 to branch 2 via the firewall connected to the hub. Let's look at the current traffic path from branch 1 to branch 2. So let's go to network. Let's go to branch 1. Let's go to troubleshooting trace route. And let's input our destination at branch 2. And as you can see, that the traffic directly flows from branch 1 to branch 2. Similarly, let's check the traffic from branch 2 to branch 1. Let's, go to, let's input our destination of branch 1. And this also goes directly from branch two to branch one. So let's first now uh, let's also check on the uh, routes on branch one. Here you can see that the branch two destinations are available through 4.4.102, which is the system IP address of branch two. Similarly, let's go to branch two router. Here you can see that the branch one destinations are available from 4.4.101, which is the system IP address of branch one. So the first thing that we need to do is to actually go to the templates. Uh, and within the template, I have a hub template which is attached to the hub. So let's go ahead and edit that to include a service. So within the template, I'll go to the service VPN and add the source service VPN. Now I'm gonna choose the VPN 10 service template which I've already created. Let's quickly go and view that. So this is the VPN template that I'm going to use. This is for VPN 10. And in this, I have defined the two services. The first service is the net service one and the second is the net service two. And what I need is the IP address, which I will input when we update the template. So let's go back. And then go to service VPN and then attach the two interfaces. Let's attach one interface, another interface that's connecting to the firewalls. So I'm going to use uh, the predefined templates again. And let's quickly view our templates. So this is the template uh, for the interface that's connect across to the firewall. So you see that this is connecting on interface, uh, sub interface on 2.8.871. And I would input an IP address here. So let's go ahead and go back and go to service VPN. So all these things are done. So we'll go ahead and update the template. So this pushes the necessary VPN and the service configurations necessary on those devices. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just uh, edit the template here. And the first one is the, the net service one service address, which is the firewall address on one of the interface, which is 192.169.15.10. And this is the second interface, which is 192.169.16.10. And these are the interface IP addresses of the device, which is the v, uh, VH hub, which connects to the firewall. Let's also quickly check the, uh, the diagram. So 15.10 and 16.10 are the interfaces of the firewall and one, two are the interfaces of the hub. So let's go ahead and hit update. So this will push the necessary configurations on the hub router for the service VPN. So let's just wait. So the configuration has been successfully pushed to the device. So now uh, we can go ahead and create our policies. Let's go to policies. and add our policy. Now we don't need to create any groups of interest, so we'll just go ahead and hit next. So here, we'll add a custom control route policy. So we're gonna use a control policy to divert the traffic to the hub firewall. So let's name this policy, hub firewall. Let me add a sequence and I'm going to add a route control policy. Let me add my first rule. And here I'm going to match site. So with respect to site one, I'm going to match the site two 
uh, destinations so site 2 is 302 and on the actions tab I'm gonna accept and include our service that we just created so net service and for the service VPN of 10 so let's hit save so just expanding on it so we're making on site 302 and then calling our net service let's create another rule and this time match on site ID one, branch 1 which is 301 and similarly we'll go to actions and then accept and then call our service which is the net service 2 in this case service 15 let's go ahead and hit save so these are the two policies uh, let's also go to the default action and change that to accept so that's a policy and let's go ahead and save policy so that's our policy uh, for the control traffic so let's next uh, we don't need to uh, do any application via routing we are going to move all our traffic from branch 1 to branch 2 via the firewall so we'll just skip the step and just go to next and again now here we'll create our policy name we'll call it service chain and the policy hub firewall just created we'll add our site list which should be your branch one and branch one will apply it to our outbound site lists we'll just hit add and then let's quickly preview our policy so this is the configuration that actually will be pushed to the vSmart which will then push it to the respective VH devices so let's go back and hit save and that's our policy that we just created so let's go ahead and activate this policy so wait for the policy to get pushed the policy is successfully pushed now so let's now go back uh, to our network and check the traffic flows so let's go to branch one I'm going to troubleshooting and now hit trace route and put the destination of our branch to endpoint for the service if you have 10 and now you can see that the traffic actually flows through the firewall 15.10 which is the firewall interface so similarly let's check the traffic from branch 2 to branch 1 so let's go to branch 2 trace route and input our branch on destination and there you can see that this also flows to the firewall 16.10 being the firewall interface so we have symmetry of traffic flows between both the devices let's go back to our edges now earlier we had seen that the destinations available from 4.4.1 or 2 now let's quickly check And you can see now the destinations are available through 4.4.200, which is the system IP address of the hub VH. Similarly, let's check on branch 2. Earlier, we were able to see them through 4.4.101, which was branch 1 VH. And now, those have again changed from branch 1 to 4.4.200, which is the system IP address of the hub. One thing to note with this policy is that though the traffic path between branch 1 and branch 2 is via the hub firewall, the IPsec tunnels are directly established between the branches. Uh, we can tune the policies uh, further to ensure IPsec is also terminated to the hub and not directly if that's a requirement. Thus, you can see how simple it is to create service chaining policies with Vitella and steer traffic across the desired path. That's it for the demo. Thanks for watching.